Hello everybody. Dewey asked me to show him how to write a script that would disable his Wi-Fi every day at 1 a.m. This sounded like a perfect opportunity for me to go into detail about script triggers. Usually, a user will trigger a script by double-clicking it to run it or dropping files on it. A third option is to write an on-idle script that would stay running at all times and wait for you to do something that it's monitoring. In this case, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into using LaunchD. Some people also will refer to this as a cron job. Cron is technically deprecated within macOS, so really nowadays you would want to use LaunchD. That's the preferred method. To configure our LaunchD service, we're going to write a property list file, otherwise known as a plist. On screen, I've got a, an example plist pulled up here that we'll use to create our first job. And I've got most of the parameters filled out, but I'll talk a little bit more about them in detail. First, you'll notice I've got a key named label, and below that I've got a string value of com.clickingkeys.sample application. This string can be anything you want it to be, but usually it should be in the form of com.domain.name of the application. So here I've just created one for clicking keys and then given it sample application as my name. After that, you can see I've got a key for program and we'll fill in that string in a minute. After that, we've got low priority IO set to true. And then after that, we've got our calendar interval. This is gonna be where we can set the hour and minute of the launch time. In this example, I've set hour to one and minute to 30. So that would tell this script to run at 1.30 a.m. every day. The way I've configured this property list, it's expecting to run an application. So I'm gonna show you now how to copy the path to the application and paste it into the string portion of the program key. When trying to run a script that you've saved as a .app file within LaunchD, it's important that you right click and show contents of your package and navigate into the applet and that's the path that you add to the string portion of the program parameter. I should also mention that a plist file is nothing more than a plain text file saved with a .plist extension. So I've written mine in an application called bbedit that I'll link below. When saving your LaunchD property list file, you'll want to put it in your library launch daemons folder, as shown on screen. Now that we've got our property list written and saved in the correct location, it's time to load it. So we're going to go to our terminal and we're going to write the command launch ctl space load, and then we can just drag in our property list file. What this has done is this has registered our plist file with launchd, so we can check that by going launch ctl list, and then if we do a search with command F, we can look through and find that our property list did in fact load. In the second example of a plist file, I'm gonna show you how to load a script file rather than a .app file. So you'll notice here that I've got a new key called program arguments. And in that key, I've got two strings, one for user bin OSA script, and then the second one is going to be the path to the script file. Additionally, I've got a run at load key with a value of true, and then lastly, I've got a start interval of 600. The run at load parameter tells it to run this plist file as soon as it's loaded, and the start interval tells it to repeat every 600 seconds. Just like in the previous example, I'm gonna right click on my script and I'm going to copy its path location, and then I will paste that into the string parameter of our program arguments. This will tell it where to find the script when it wants to launch it. And just like in our previous version, now we need to load that plist file. So we're going to write launch ctl load and then bring in our new plist file and drop it. Now that we've loaded our second plist file, it's just a matter of waiting for the 10 minute interval to pass and for our script to run. So here you can see it just ran my new script and we can see that the launch parameters are working correctly. At some point, you may decide you no longer want one of these launch agents to run. So to remove one, you'll type in launchctl unload, and then you'll drag in that plist file once again. This will remove it from the triggers and will prevent it from running in the future. However, you do need to remember to delete the plist file out of your launch daemons folder, otherwise a reboot will cause it to re-register with the launchctl service. Hey, if you've enjoyed watching this video, consider clicking that like button. Maybe even watch one of these other videos. You might learn something new.